they're letting you slide because God knows how much bribes they're accepting. I mean, you know, how many of these politicians are, are multimillionaires? Okay, you should not ought to get into an office like, you know, being a politician. You're, you're, look, the only reason you're supposed to be collecting taxes is to look after the poor. Because if you just ended poverty, it's all spelled out in the Bible, that God is a champion of the poor, okay, folks? We're to be proper reflections of God, to proper representatives of God, we have to ourselves be champions of the poor and understand this is the crux of the issue. If you just end poverty, guess what? Okay? That means prosperity. Because there's no more poverty, there's no more poverty. That equals prosperity. It's as simple as that. And what happens? One of the first things that happens when you end poverty is that you find out crime dries up. So you live in a much safer, much more civilized society. Okay, <clears throat> so your criminal injustice system dries up. So, so what? Jobs in you know the field of being lawyers and attorneys and uh, you know uh, uh, jailers and bail bondsmen and clerks and judges. Don't worry. I am. Look, if I was running the world, I'm not going to hurt. Everybody's going to be fine. Nobody has to worry about a radical like me who's just saying that hey, human beings should have the rights as every other animal out there, born free. Okay, that's all I'm saying, unless you're livestock or a zoo animal, which no humans are, humans should simply be born free and not be hold into this invented, this engineered, money-based reality. So the way to get free is through sound currency, because that's the eventual, that's, it's just a means to an end to have sound currency, because that's what happens. When everybody has enough, nobody's greedy and hoarding, nobody, everybody's got a sense of security, that's your prosperity, you feel secure. You feel like nobody's going to take your house away. Nobody, and I mean nobody. So if you're employed in any field that I'm attacking, don't worry. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm on everybody's side, and that's okay. I want to be everybody's friend. I just want, you know, I want to be like God. So I'm just looking to God to, you know, be the kind of leader that, you know, and that's what I would want from you. If we were all that kind of leader, and we went out there and preached this stuff, we walked our talk, you know, and we were willing to take our own medicine because what am I saying? Be free. So I want to be free. I want you to be free. I want your kids to be free. I want my kids to be free. Everybody. So the debt. Another thing that disappears and dries up is debt. Because unless you're needy, you're not going to be borrowing. And what did Shakespeare see, uh, say? Neither lender nor borrower be. You know, hey, look. Folks, these are not new ideas, but we've been so deeply and profoundly mind effed and inculcated that steady beating down the indoctrination, the programming, the conditioning, the incrementalism. Now, progressivism is just, it's not a liberal idea. This is more destroying incrementally, just imposing this, this, this miasma-filled society, this, this social Darwinian state of dog-eat-dog, dog, devouring one another. They've got us in this mindset. Now, you can see it. Back to the driving. You know, you can see it. It's emblematic and indicative of the way people drive. They're all stressed out and mean and miserable. You know, fear-driven, money-grubbing, uh, programmable, automaton idiots. That's what they've turned us into. And we've got to step back and say, no, I don't want to be that anymore. I want, I'm here for a little while. I might be dead today, but damn it, I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to be who I really want to be. Not who these idiots at the top, these monsters, these mur this murderous gaggle of merciless thugs have told me I should be searching for. Piles of money, fame and fortune, all this crap. No, understand, you were born unthinkably wealthy. Okay, that's by divine decree. That's not because I say so. This earth, it's just logic. This earth belongs to you. And the goodies, all the goodies belong to you. Okay, that's the infrastructure and the factories, the buildings, all this stuff is God's creation. You know, last night I, I was watching this video on YouTube about Russian fighter jets. You know, there's another thing. God owns every stitch of kit technology belongs to God. Why? Because God gave us the brain we have. Without the brain that God gave us, we wouldn't have anything. But, you know, I was enthralled. I, 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 I just enjoyed this video so much. I can't believe it. I mean, at this point in my life, 50, almost 57 years old, and still I'm so excited about this. I mean, I really have a dream now of actually learning how to fly a freaking, you know, jet fighter. And this video actually had, you know, American pilots and American planes, the F-15. I think they talked about the F-18, 19, I forget. 
all the numbers and codes, but you know, there's these beautiful planes that these guys are flying at, at you know, Mach 2.4, which is 5, whatever. It, this is like 16, 1700 miles an hour. It's fascinating stuff. But I'm really excited about that at this point in my life. There's so much cool stuff that we could be focused on as human beings, you know, doing. You know, focused on getting off the dirty fuel because I understand the jet fuel is exor exorbitant. You know, the Russian fighters would like to fly a lot more. They were talking about this, but they can't afford it, so they're letting private private people that want to fly, you know, in the back of the plane, because it's a two-seater to sit in the back. And, uh, you know, they pay 15,000 bucks for this, you know, uh, an experience that lasts a matter of minutes. But apparently the jet fuel is expensive. So I wonder, why aren't they using alternative fuels like hydrogen, which is abundant? You know, wouldn't that be just as, as safe and, uh, you know, prudent a fuel to use, which is clean and renewable? It's, a, you know, very abundant, you know? But we could have all this. We could have Tesla technology where you have a device on your house that was just extracting because the air is full of electricity because the earth is spinning at over a thousand miles an hour. So the earth is full of electricity and he just found a way to tap into it. So all of us could have this perfectly clean, infinite sources of energy. And the earth, is, you'd understand, is very sparsely populated. Not like these idiots say, oh, it's overpopulated, we're destroying it, we gotta get rid of you. And, we're the altruistic good guys, you know, for the greater good. We're going to save Gaia, Mother Earth, and all this crap. There's all these alternative fuels. This guy, Stan Meyer, look up that name. He invented an engine that could take a car 100 miles on a gallon of water. He, he didn't even have a high school diploma, as I recall. And he was just a genius. So, you know, he showed with, you know, a bank of batteries, just like you would have in a hybrid car, how you can crack the molecule and create hydrogen on demand, just as you need it, to operate these vehicles. So this is the kind of technology that's being suppressed. Why? Money. It's always the motive, folks. It's the money. It's causing all our problems. If you hate abortion, just ask yourself, how many rich women do you hear of getting abortion? Those that are rich are secure, financially secure. They, they'll have their babies. They'll feel blessed. It's the poor they're doing this to. You understand it? All the heat falls on the poor. They're the ones that are paying the price. They're committing genocide right in our faces. And we can't see the forest for the trees. And this is how they're doing it. They're, this is undue to the poor. If they were lazy, I'd say, yeah, you know, give them a few more beats if their people are unwilling to work. And they got too decadent and spoiled and hedonistic and selfish and self-serving. So, you know, maybe that'd be justified. But it's not. You've got to prove to me that's the case. And you can't prove it to me while there's an unemployment rate. It's that simple. So don't blame the poor. They don't create the economic policies. They don't have any power in this world. The poor are more charitable in the relative term than the rich because they're giving a higher percentage of their income, of their, of their savings. Okay, so, you know, let's understand, you know, let's put the blame where it belongs, you know. We've got to hold these chemtrail pilots accountable. It's just like that in dubious war. You've got to hold the guy that took the order that did something, you know, they, how about holding Blackwater accountable and Z, these hired killers and whatnot. I mean, that's basically it. You know, I mean, if I started a militia, it'd be based on the idea of just confronting the evildoers. That's enough, okay, is just getting in their face and say, look, I'm trying to be your friend here, but I'm not going to accept you not dealing with me, not dealing with reality while you sit behind here pulling the strings of the politicians, okay, the money masters and, and all the, these special interest groups that are colluding to just destroy the wealth of this country to the nth generation. You've stolen the wealth of our nation. Okay, we're not going to tolerate it anymore. We're going to stand up to you, okay, and we're going to say no, no, no. Okay, these people give us, you know, one politician, Democrat or Republican, A or B, but really they just keep in, taking us on the same trajectory. They're pleasing their masters. It's the money printing class they're pre pleasing. That's all they care about. They don't give a crap about. You know, we the people, they're not egalitarians. They don't care about your gender, your race, your color, your creed, your political affiliation. They don't care how much money you have or don't have. They just want to continue running our lives, okay? They just want to stay at the top. They want that power. They want that control over humanity. They want to keep raping the daylights out of us, folks, because we all have to step back and say, where has the wealth gone? Wealth just doesn't disappear. Even fiat currency just doesn't disappear. People are hoarding it. Their, their, their nuts are rotting. It's like the Bible says, your riches have rotted. Weep and wail, folks. These people are going down hard, believe me. 
I'm an eternal optimist and I know what's written in scripture. I know that good will prevail in this matter, but we're a part of that. Human beings are created, like the Bible says, just a little lower than the angels. So each one of us has a huge responsibility to do God's bidding, to be the first, you know, we're the foot soldiers, we're on the front lines, and we're called in to stick our necks out, to be courageous like JFK and other people like Martin Luther King Jr., people, all the saints and, and righteous people that came before them whose lives had been threatened by the same establishment, all these minions thereof, they're working for the beast system, these people are hypocrites, they're elitists, it was, that's, that's enough right there, like the, the ones Jesus went off on, these were authoritarians, they exalted themselves above others, and they lived by double standard, they were hypocrites for that reason, and he just, he railed on these people, he confronted them, not to be mean, not to make them feel like big man on campus, but because they needed to hear it, they needed to, understand I'm not taking no for an answer you must be reasonable that's it that's all I'll say you know that's the only the only 